Hey guys, this is Nick and I'm going to do a quick tutorial about the new reflectance channel and the new material engine that Cinema 4D R16 has. Uh, maybe this will save you guys some time. Um, maybe you already know a lot of this, uh, but I think that it's going to be um, it's going to be a big shift in how we think about materials going forward. And so I just kind of want to talk about it. This might be a little bit rambling because this is complex and I'm still figuring it out as well, but it's a lot of fun and uh, I'm excited for, uh, for, to see what, to see what people can do with this. So I'm going to start with just a single problem. We're going to solve a problem. And the first problem we're going to solve is we want to add some reflections to the subsurface material that I made right here. Just kind of a typical, um, you know, kind of standard molecular viz subsurface material. And I'm gonna go through my render setup real quick in case it's interesting or, or, um, or helpful as we go forward. Uh, so uh, the first thing is a typical three-point light rig. Um, this is my key light and it's a, it's a, a spotlight. Um, I've got an area light back here. You can see it's a little blue uh, for our backlighting. And then I've got a reflected light down here, kind of the salmon color, so it's about 65%. So pretty typical three-point light rig. Uh, my render settings here are, I'm just using the physical renderer, you know, which I really like, and I'll talk a little bit more about how that works with the uh, new reflectance channel in a second. I've just got the sampling quality set to low, so it renders a little faster while we're talking about things. And in the ambient occlusion uh, um, module, I've got the uh, maximum ray lengths at the 40 instead of 100, which is the default. 100 is just huge, and you get a lot of grain that's way far away from where you would expect it to be with AO, I think, because uh, most of the scales that we use are much smaller. And then I've got the um, the center of the gradient just shifted a little to the left. I find this fall off is a little m more interesting. Um, I like the I like the look a little bit better. Not a big deal, but that's that's just that's just how I how I like to do it. Um, inside my subsurface material right now. I've just got a color, it's set to blue, um, and I've got this, uh, I've got just a typical subsurface setup right here, strength at 140, path length at 12, um, which works for this particular object. And uh, I've got this little fall off here between the uh, RGB channels, which on larger objects, it's not very noticeable on this, this guy here, but on larger objects in particular, um, this this makes for a really nice little color fall off as you as you dive into the object. Uh, the red channel is the one that I want to come all the way through, and I actually want it to supersede the 12 centimeters by just a little bit. Um, and so it makes the object look like it's got this kind of red waxy core, and then green is 10%, blue 40%. Um, in multiple, I've got fast evaluation enabled. I've got sample density down to 20 from 100%, which is too many samples. We don't really need that most of the time. Uh, so I set that to 20 and I set smoothing to 50 to compensate for the lower sample density. This really speeds up your subsurface render. So th this is stuff you probably already know, but if you don't, I thought I'd just mention it really quickly since we're doing a material tutorial here. So I'm gonna hop back into my scene camera. Um, and oh, so the sky object, I've got uh, just a, uh, an interesting little image here uh, <clears throat> for, for our reflections and I've got it blurring just a little bit here, um, which is a, it's a lot faster to blur it here than in the materials, even with reflectance still. So that's, that's what's going on there. So when you open up a new material in Cinema 4D R16, you'll notice that your specular channel is gone, obviously, and your reflecting, um, your reflection channel is gone as well. And they've both been combined into the reflectance channel. But don't worry, because the reflectance channel basically by default, is just your default specular from the original system. If you look at type right here, we have the Fong uh, specular legacy channel. And I've already changed these a little bit to get our, to get a wet light like we would normally get. Um, we, we use wet lights a lot, obviously, so that's, that's what I built here, using the exact same parameters that the original specular channel had. So the good news is when you use reflectance, um, it behaves just the same as the original specular channel. Uh, initially, so so no worries. You can you can hop in and use it almost exactly the same as you would have used the old material system. So they didn't get rid of anything, which is really good. Um, one thing that they've added, even to the default, that I really think is a great idea, is this this preview box right here on the left. This is this algorithm on the right, or the the visual display, the waveform is what we're used to. They've added this cool preview on the left, which shows you just the specular light as a layer. Um, and you can see that your specular is being added. Um, that means that any layers that you add below this, the specular channel will be 
added on top as a blending mode similar to Photoshop, um, which is great. So, But this preview is really interesting because it isolates your specular light from whatever else you have going on over here in your procedural channels. And so you can see just the specular light. And this preview box is a new addition, and it's the same with any of the other layers that you add, which is fantastic. So I'll show you what that looks like here in a little bit as well. Um, but that's, so this is the default. I just want to walk through this real quick if you haven't had a chance to dive into that on your own. Uh, so let's open up our SSS material here. Right now there's nothing going on in reflectance. I've got it turned off. Um, I have a couple of layers here that I added earlier when I was messing around, so we'll just shut those off real quick. I'm going to turn reflectance on, and since we don't have any layers, nothing happens as expected. Um, so we're going to add uh, a layer. And when you, when, you, when you first dive into this, this can be really intimidating because there are all these different layers. What the heck does any of this mean? Fortunately, the documentation for this is really good. And the, the sum of the documentation is that Beckman is really the only one you need. GGX is really good for metal, brush metal. Um, it's a little more physically accurate, and it, it's got a few more, I guess, um, it's, it's got some more action going on in terms of the render for metal. These other two are almost identical. In fact, these are all very, very similar to each other. It'd be very, you'd be hard-pressed to just use the default out-of-the-box uh, layers for any of these and, and be able to pick out which one is which. Uh, however, Beckman renders a little faster and is physically accurate, so Beckman is probably the one that you'll end up using the most, the first one to reach for. Inisotropic is really great for brush metal, but I've been able to get some nice brush metal look with Beckman anyway, so I'm not sure when uh, this would be appropriate compared to uh, some of these other things. These two are really cool. You can get some really far out effects like subsurface scattering and weird lighting effects and things like that, but they're very render expensive and I haven't been able to justify using one of these over another combination of materials yet. Um, but they're really cool, and I look forward to playing with these some more. This is new. Um, this is a totally new layer. Uh, V-Ray and some other render engines have always had a woven cloth render, which is a very complex um, layer system, but uh, I don't know when we would use this other than uh, maybe surgical drapery and things like that, but a lot of fun. Look forward to an excuse to use this. And then we've got our legacy systems here, so if you're freaking out and you just want you just want to make a material real quick, you've got it right here. You can do a reflection, and then you add a specular light on top of your reflection layer, um, so not a big deal. We're going to dump it. We're going to uh, jump into Beckman. The first thing you'll notice is that we've completely lost all of our other layers or procedural layers up here. So if I go here and I render, all we're going to get is this bright, shiny, super shiny metal object. It's reflecting 100% of everything around it and it's doing nothing else. Okay, um, And this, is, this speaks to the, the power of the reflectance channel in, in that it, it basically um, behaves the way light actually behaves in that when we turn this layer on, what we've done is we've just created 100% reflection. What you see when you look at an object, obviously, is just light that's being reflected. The light that gets absorbed is where we get color. This works the same way. Okay, so um, right now we're just getting 100% reflection. There are a lot of different ways to change this, to modify this, to bring our layers back. Um, one thing you can do is you can change your global reflection brightness, okay? And that's just going to reflect, this is going to change how much light is reflected versus how much is absorbed. The global reflection, the same, you can do the same thing down here with just the brightness, right? This is the exact same thing. The difference between these two is that the global reflection brightness would affect all of your layers. So if we added another Beckman layer and we change global reflection brightness, it's going to affect global reflection brightness for both layers. If we changed it just on this one layer, um, it's only going to affect it on that one layer, okay? So we're just going to delete that layer, and we're going to go down to layer one, and um, we're going to reduce the brightness down to about 50%, okay? And then we're going to hit render and see what we've got. So this is exactly what you would expect, right? The reflections are still reflecting 100% off of every surface, but they're just not as bright. So that's not super realistic. Um, but it's, it's interesting. It's an interesting uh, look. So what can we do? Well, this layer Fresnel thing is pretty cool. Normally when you would set up a reflection, if you're, you know, in the last system, you would add a Fresnel to it because light doesn't, you know, you're not going to get uh, this, the, in, the angle of incidence isn't going to be 100% back in your direction around a reflective object. So you typically would add 
uh, Fresnel effect um, on multiply to get a little more realistic look for your reflections. Well, this is exactly the same thing, but this Fresnel system is much more interesting because you've got two basic systems. You've got dielectric and conductor. The Cinema 4D documentation for these says that dielectric is basically for transparent objects and glass objects and things like that. And conductor is for metal objects and more opaque objects. Now, we're, the fun part is we're not beholden to that, right? We can use either one for either thing. In fact, you can see there's a little tab here for opaque, for dielectric, and for conductor. Not real sure <laughs> what that does specifically yet, um, but uh, Th that I use that to to point out that we can do whatever we want. Just because the documentation says dielectric is best for transparent objects doesn't mean you shouldn't check it out for an opaque object like this. In fact, when you look at the list of objects in here, the vast majority of them are not totally transparent anyway. Um, particularly asphalt, I think, is an interesting addition here. Uh, not sure why that would be a dielectric versus a, a conductive, but, but there it is. Um, so we're going to pick maybe... Um, Pearl, and, uh, and let's see what we got here. Now that we've added a Fresnel to our reflectance channel. Kind of nice. It's a nice look. So now we've got some reflection. Um, it's fairly believable, pretty realistic. We've got our subsurface still working, and they're playing nicely together. It's looking pretty good already. Um, and, and all we did was just use an out-of-the-box uh, Fresnel, Pearl Dielectric. You can mess with the strength, so if you reduce this, you're going to reduce the effect of the Fresnel, not the reflection strength. So if we go all the way to zero, it's basically like it looked before we added the Fresnel, right? Makes sense. Um, roughness is exactly what you would think. You can just increase roughness and it adds this roughness to your reflections. It's sort of the old blur, um, but this is physically accurate, so you get this more anisotropic look. And if we did that, and we'll hit this, and it will just soften those reflections. Um, actually, that's exactly the opposite of what I thought it would do. Let's add some more roughness and see what happens here. There we go. Not sure what happened before. Um, but there you go. So now we've got some blur on, on those reflections, and it looks a little bit more like a, just an interesting specular light. Okay, so we're gonna reduce the roughness down to zero. And now we're gonna add um, a channel. We're just gonna add another Beckman channel. But in this case, what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a lot of roughness here. We're gonna increase the specular strength, we're gonna reduce the reflection strength, and we're gonna give it a color. We're gonna give it this kind of yellow, yellow looking color. And now we're gonna add it. So this this here um, has to do with how these layers play together. You can have it on normal, and then it would basically completely override this. So we can set this to zero, and we're only seeing this channel, just like you would with your normal layer blending modes. Um, so we can set this to like 45%, and now they're working together. If we set this to add, um, we can, now they're playing together because it's adding instead of normal, right? Just like normal blending mode. Okay. So we're going to add a Fresnel to this also, and this one we're going to use, let's do um, titanium nitride, because titanium nitride has some color. So if I set this to white, you can see in our preview here, and remember this preview is just for this layer, um, like we were talking about the specular light. This is only what this layer is doing for us. Uh, you can see that the, this particular Fresnel actually also adds color to the reflection. Um, What's weird is that there isn't a color channel on the layer for now, and if you set the color channel to white, it's still adding color. Th this is just a preset, so that means that the color is hidden somewhere in this preset. I, I'm not sure why they did it that way, um, but it is interesting. If you set it to color, um, you can you can get some weird um, effects going on by changing you know how this plays with IOR and absorption, and then if you add color here, you can start to get some really interesting interesting things, um, coloring your object using the uh, custom Fresnel and some, some weird things. But you can actually just add, add any color to the layer color, and that's going to that's gonna color the reflection on that layer anyway. So not sure what the deal is with that, but I'm sure uh, it'll be interesting and, and we'll figure it out soon. So now that we've got, um, let's add a little more roughness. Okay, I'm going to turn down the brightness just a little bit. So let's see what we've got. Now we've got these two layers playing together. Make sure this is... Um, yeah, okay, so let's see what we've got. 
Okay, so now I've got this very pearly kind of um, subsurface look, and you can see that there's just this little yellow tint um, in these areas where that second layer or that top layer is coming through. So this is very this, to me this looks just like like pearl, like a pink, you know, with the subsurface and and that kind of thing. So very interesting look for um, for the molecular visualization that would have been really difficult to do in the old system. Um, you know, not not something that you'd want to do all necessarily uh, for for every project, but but very very interesting look. Um, and then you can adjust it, and obviously we can we could color that specular even further by adding color um, into the into the actual um, layer color channel, and um, that subdues it a little bit more, adds a little more color on the diffuse specular areas. So, uh, and you can also see how the Fresnel is working on the edges. You can see that that's changed a little bit of the reflection colors on the edge, but Interesting look, um, very cool. I'm looking forward to um, talking to everybody and, and seeing what everyone comes up with using these new systems. This is just this is just scratching the surface. Obviously, there's so much more here, and uh, look forward to to putting together a few more experiments and tutorials and stuff. And and look forward to seeing what you guys do too. Thanks.